it's Michelle from Movement Lesson. And I want to start discussing functional anatomy. It, it is going to be a course series that I will be doing, but right now I'm finishing up the cognitive vision series. Um, I also have uh, the fine and gross motor skills evaluations that I'm working on that pertain much more to movement-based activities. But I really want to discuss the pelvis uh, because I think there's a lot of misinformation on the function of the pelvis and, and how we get around, especially if we have muscle-based issues and this is directed more towards, at the moment, uh, to a child that's low tone. There are a lot of models that say the pelvis works like this. There's no way we could walk or do anything like this. This is only if we were floating in space and maybe being able to do that. And even in space we wouldn't do it because if you can see his arms countering back and forth, there's no counteraction in outer space. There's also a misconception that we just float up there. It's not. It's just a different type of environment that we expect our bodies to work at in the environment that we have here. Looking closely at the pelvis, the pelvis to me is like scales, old time scales at the supermarket kind of thing. So yes, as let's say I do a step up, my body is not only calculating the compression or the force that it has here, but also here through the shoulders, let's say, or, or even through the pelvis, but also the force that it has through the foot and also the force that it has going through space. And this is the key calculations that need to happen. It is the force that we have going through space as we oppose the two forces, which we consider atmospheric, let's say, and floor pressure. So that is how we get pelvic function. So if we so as we look at this from, from the forward view, and now I'm going to come back here. Now, obviously, he's rotted. He's got wires in here. So those kind of things are going to take into consideration. I'm working on doing a model that's more free-based. But let's say if I was going to take a step up, we would be putting our force through gravity, and that's what we come through. Now, we call this force gravity, whatever you want to do it, but we walk through it. So as the foot comes down, and this alone is what the pelvis is doing. But also what is happening now is from the floor as I go up, I will start a little bit of a pelvic tilt. It also will depend on the load that I'm carrying, not only from my body, but let's say I have groceries from a side view. So again, as this force from the side goes through, now what starts to happen, and you can see much better here, this is a ball and socket. It is also done on an angle very similar to that of a gothic arch. So if you will watch that, the trochanter will cross midline and it will roll that socket. This is not a hinge joint. So this is different. If I was just standing, let's say, on a curb and swinging my leg, you will get this. You see how there's no activation other than that leg acting like a pendulum. Our legs very rarely act like a true pendulum. Yes, they will swing in a gait. What happens, again, is I will go in and start rounding that pelvis. Now, I'm over-exaggerating here only because, again, I've got a big screw going into my st sacrum. But what happens is this circulatory movement comes as the pelvis goes, there's a counter here. So we have the pelvis going forward, the femur going towards the back. And again, when the femur, again, the trochanter has to cross midline for the pelvis to come back. See the midline crossing, midline crossing. This is what a pelvis needs to do. So whether a child or a person is high tone or low tone, if you're not working with the mechanics of rotation within the body, and I'm talking within the body, not on an exterior rotation, the system will make overcompensations through the pelvic girdle in its balance. 
So if the torque is not there, let's say, and the stand is there, that's where you'll start to see what I call counter opposing. Now, just so you see what that looks like, I can counter oppose at any time. You will not see this as a child. A child will weight transfer. And for weight transferring, you'll see actually the pelvis go down, not go up. This is why a one-year-old really can't march. We start learning these skills as our bodies be able to, are able to do these things. My rubber band broke. That was one of my pelvic ligaments to show. As I go through, and again, the ligaments here will give me a force that is needed to do these kind of movements as I have gait. Looking from that from the rear, now again, as I shift weight, not as obvious on Frank. Just that weight shift, the sacrum should coccyx go down to the load-bearing foot. Uh, you're taught in anatomy that eventually we will get rid of our coccyx. It'll just evolve out of ourselves. Well, if that happens, we're never going to walk. So the, the, the tailbone actually should be able to make a very nice circle in all instances of everything that we do. Again, when you have a low or a high tone child developing because they haven't grabbed their feet, uh, a really crucial milestone, rolling over, all of those little things they should have countered with their tailbone. So as I go to, let's say, step on a step, again, you will see that wag of the tail and as I shift weight, you know, that sacrum coccyx is really an organization that needs to be worked on for functional movement. This is about as much as I'm going to get out of Frank. So you're not going to see that movement. But really, this whole sacrum here should be able to circle within itself as well as the tailbone should circle within that sacrum. So all of these fine movements, and this is one of the things I will be describing in functional anatomy, the spine, all of this are really our fine motor skills. When you look at it from infantile or immature muscle systems before we get into the glutes, hamstrings, and all the things that uh, adults like to work on, really that whole sacral mechanism within the pelvis and the tailbone as the pelvis counters. So as the, the, the pelvis, two separate units, are countering each other. That's what they have to do in walking. They don't do same, same. That whole sacrum, coccyx, has that conversation going on within this unit. The pelvis structure is really much more complex than we give it credit for. It is not just a low lift variation. This is the only point in the human body where you have the integration of the two opposing forces. You have muscle-based structures are going down in, muscle-based structures coming back in. But it's that ability to go through, to present to the ground. Anyone with good balance needs to be able to have their pelvic girdle to be able to go down towards that ground. That pubic bone needs to be able to look for the ground. The pubic symphysis is really important here. It's not tummy time, it's a pubic bone strike. That's your first walk. This is like the heel of the foot, and these are like the toes. Our pelvis needs to be able to do all those movements. So when you're working with a child that has issues with muscles, high or low tone, it's not about strength. It's the ability to work with all these forces, and it happens most crucially here at the pelvis. So that's the first thing you really need to consider first is what is the pelvic mechanics of that person going on in relationship to the rest of the movements within the body. Thank you again. Look forward to the functional anatomy courts. If you have any comments, leave them below. Uh, please like or subscribe. We're going into a whole new level of, of movement awareness teaching, um, course seminars, uh, as well as, as always, that I do these, these public videos for your guidance, and I'd love your feedback. Thank you.